Oh, hey, hi there, Attorney Steve Vondren. Welcome back to another exciting video. We, I was just doing a little graffiti here. So this, is, this video is a very important video for property owners, okay, and visual artists, okay? So this is a case, very interesting. It just came down recently. $6.75 million award to 21 artists for graffiti that they had on a building. What are we talking about? I don't know. Let's go to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard and let's find out. Okay, all right. So we are talking in this video about Vera, Vara, Vera, Visual Artists Rights Act. Visual Artists Rights Act. This is a law that protects artists and people who make sculptures and paintings and drawings, those kinds of things that give these artists moral rights, moral rights to their works. And what happened in this case, a very interesting case, and let me see if I can get the, the case title here for you, Castillo versus GNM Realty LP. Castro, excuse me, Castillo versus GNM Realty LP. This is out of the Second Circuit. This is out of the New York area. Case comes from Queens, New York, okay? And this has to do with what we call street art or what we call, I have these out here, aerosol artists. Get that little, find a little touch in there. Aerosol artists, you ever heard that term? Well, you have now, okay? So this video is about the Visual Artist Rights Act. 21 artists got together and they there was this property called Five Points with a Z, Five Points at Z, out in Queens, New York, okay? This was known as a graffiti mecca. If you wanna see the actual picture, just type in five points with a Z. Go to Google Images. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's pretty cool. Artists would come from all over the world to come and contribute to this property. And it was owned by a real estate developer. It was a developer's property. But he said, you know, you guys can come on in. And he bought the property, I think, for a million dollars. And he said, you guys can come on in and do graffiti and, you know, until I figure out what I want to do. And so they would do all this graffiti all over the building. It was, I think it was about 100,000 square feet of just kind of old building, but it was looking really cool and it had all these, these uh, graffiti artworks and everything else. So there was 21 artists that had contributed to this. Now, some of these were on a temporary basis. So the, the owner said, well, you can, you can put up your, your graffiti, you can do your art, but you know, I might paint over it or I might do something. So it was kind of, there was a temporary aspect to it, okay? But that didn't affect the decision. Finally, one day, the, the, the developer says he's gonna paint over. He's gonna paint over the whole thing, what the court called whitewashing, whitewashing. He painted everything white and went over it, okay? So, but he didn't do that until they filed a lawsuit, okay? He, the, the artists, they got together, they hired, a, I believe they hired an attorney, got together, they filed a suit for a violation of their moral rights. They said, we don't want, that what they were seeking was an injunction. And they said, judge, we don't want you to take this down. Our artwork's on it. Don't let them just tear the building down. He wanted to build some apartment complex or some housing units, okay? And they said, judge, don't just let them tear it down. We have moral rights, moral rights to our, to our works, to our works of art here. And the court basically put the temporary injunction in place and then later um, removed the injunction. They only last so long. A TRO only lasts a short amount of time. It's a temporary restraining order, TRO. So the, according to what I read in the middle of the night, the, the uh, property owner painted over everything, whitewashing as they called it, and bingo, all their artwork was gone. So they didn't really have a chance to basically remove the art or take, you know, at their own expense or take photos, videos, chronicle their art. So this was the issue here, the moral rights. This is what VARA protects. So there were about 49 works that were essentially painted over, uh, 49 works that were painted over. I think the court found that 45 of them actually violated the VARA rights and the court gave the maximum penalty um, copyright infringement damages apply. If you haven't seen my video on copyright infringement damages, check that out. Attorney Steve, copyright damages, and you'll get that video. But the same damages apply. You can seek up to 150000 for a willfully infringed work. And the court said this was willful. I mean, he, he was, it was uh, revengeful, I think is what the court said. It was vengeful uh, under the cover of, of night, basically painting over everything and not giving anyone a chance to protect 
their moral rights, okay? So the court, and then check the box here, copyright damages apply. The court said even though this was considered to be temporary in nature, some of the murals were considered to be temporary in nature, the court says, no, that doesn't, doesn't preclude protection under VAR. It does not preclude protection. And the court, again, said willful a revenge motive, okay? So the Visual Artist Rights Act, that protects against, that gives the rights of attribution and integrity. So artists are um, able to get attribution so people know whose work it is and integrity not to intentionally destroy or modify their work without giving them a chance to protect their works and things like that. So court said, uh, noted the attribution thing. Um, the issue in this case was also whether this was a recognized stature. It has to be work of art that meets a recognized stature, like people know about it in the community. In fact, let me see if I can read this here. Court says, um, the central issue was whether the Irks had, works had achieved recognized stature. That is a work of recognized stature when it is one of high quality status or caliber that has been acknowledged as such by a relevant community. And this was like a world, like I said, a world famous place. Everybody had come here. These artists were, were international. They would come out here just to, to be part of this Mecca and lots of media, lots of social media press and a, you know, social media buzz as they called it. So this reached the, this reached the recognized stature that the court was looking for. And of course there was dis, distort, uh, distortion, mutilation, modification, and prejudicial harm to the honor or reputation. That's what you're looking for in a VARA case, okay? Um, and there was no signed waiver. And the, basically, the artists did not get a chance to protect their work. So the judgment came back. I think it was 45 um, works of art, one, two, three, and it was all over the building. It was all the way up, okay? So check that out, five points. Check that out on Google Images. But there you have it. That's a Second Circuit case. And you can see, like, if you're a property owner, you can't just tear down the building. If you see works of art, you should try to identify the person, give them a chance to protect their art, okay? Um, give them a chance to haul it away, or maybe, maybe they want to take the wall to haul it away and, and put it in a, in a restaurant somewhere. We've seen things like that, okay? So that's it. That's how, that's how VARA works in a nutshell. And again, I'm going to read this to you real quick. What does VARA apply to? A work of visual art. What is a work of visual art? Painting, drawing, print, or sculpture. We've seen sculpture cases where somebody tries to tear down a, a statue of something, okay? Um, in a single copy, in a limited edition of 200 copies or fewer that are signed and consecutively numbered by the author, or in the case of a sculpture in multiple casts, carved or fabricated sculptures, 200 or fewer, that are consecutively numbered by the author and bear the signature or other identifying mark of the author. So usually, you know, graffiti is, is signed off. Somebody signs their, their uh, initials on it and whatnot. So there you have it, folks. That's a general look at VARA. Big giant case, so if you're a property owner, don't just tear down your building. Just think you're going to get around, skirt around everybody's rights. you got to be very careful. VARA is a law, federal law, and you have to, do, you have to be careful. You can find yourself in a, in a big case like this with your aerosol artists, okay? So i got to go back and finish my beautiful work here. Have a great day. This is general legal information only and not legal advice or substitute for legal advice, advertisement, and a communication. Have a great day. Ooh, ah, that's so good.